In this chapter, we're going to study how we can use population genetics in order to find evidence of whether a population is evolving. First, let's take a look at how a population evolves. For a long time, scientists have known that populations evolve. However, it was not clear how that evolution happens. One of the first proposed theories was proposed by Lamarck, and his uh, proposal is that a trait that is acquired during the lifetime of an organism is passed on to their offspring. So the, his example, the, or the common example for this, is a, a giraffe that is, stretches her, her neck to reach the higher branches so that they, she can get more food, and that advantage will be passed on to the offspring. But now we know, based on what we know about genetics and inheritance, we know that traits that we acquire during our lifetime are not passed on to our offspring. Only traits that are coded in our genes are passed on to our offspring. So an analogy of Lamarck's theory will be to say, if you go to the gym often and you have big muscles, then your babies will be born with big muscles. We know that's not true. So based on what we know about genetics today, we know that Lamarck's theory is not possible. And this is what makes Darwin's theory so powerful and is that he's accounting for genetic inheritance. So in his proposition of how evolution happens, he says there is intrinsic variation in any population. So whenever you look at a population of giraffes, there will be some with longer necks, some with shorter necks. Just like if we look at any population, there will be variation within the individuals of that population. And those that just happen to have the genes for longer necks will be better able to get food and then they will have more offspring and their offspring will inherit that same trait so that more babies will be born from individuals with long, long necks that will also inherit the genes for long necks and over time you will see that more and more of the population will have the gene for long necks as those who have longer necks will have more offspring and their offspring will be more likely to survive while those with the genes for shorter necks will be less likely to survive or less likely to reproduce so that their genes will not get passed on. So this is based on the fact that there is genetic variation whenever we look at any population. So if we look at a population of flowers, these plants they have different flower colors. If we look at a population of butterflies, we will see different wing pattern coloration. Any population that you look closely enough you will find that they have genetic variation. We are not clones of each other, we are all different. You look at humans around the classroom, you will see we are all different. So all, all that variation is the um, raw material for evolution to happen. And the basis of evolution is which of these genetic combinations, which of these alleles will be more likely to be passed on to the next generation over the others. That is what evolution is. It's a change in the genetic composition of the population. So we find evidence that evolution is happening if we see a change in the genetic composition of a population. And this to emphasize also that evolution is not a, a means to an end or something that has a goal in sight. It's, it's rather what sets of genes are best suited for this particular environment in this point in time. And those genes will be favored and will get to reproduce and pass on to the next generation. So any uh, population that is evolving, you will see a change in their genetic composition generation after generation. On the other hand, a population that is on hardy wine or equilibrium is a population in which the allele frequency is stable. So that the same alleles are present in the same proportion generation after generation. So if evolution is a change in the genetic composition, a population in hardy one will be a population that is not evolving, will be a population that is stable, and the same alleles are present in the same proportions generation after generation. So if there is no change in the genetic composition, there will be no evolution in that population. And for the alleles to remain stable for a population to be in hardy weinberg equilibrium, there are several requirements that will have to happen. So this, this will be a population in which there is no mutation, so that no alleles are changing. It will be a population that 
there is no migration, so no individuals are moving out of the population or coming into the population. It also requires random mating so that no phenotype or, or no genotype is favored in terms of mating so that say all the females want to mate with the males with red feathers, that would be no, uh, a violation of random mating. So everyone, any genotype or any phenotype has the same chances of mating as any other genotype. The population has to be large and the reason for this is because random events can have big effects in a small population. So if you say an earthquake or you have a, an avalanche or something that wipes part of the population, if you have a small population, it's very likely that some of the alleles will disappear because of those random events and not necessarily because they were advantageous. And finally, for the alleles frequency to be stable, you need to have no selection so that no allele is favored over any other. So in summary, if all these conditions are met, a population will be in highly one where equilibrium but it will also be a population that is not evolving. So you might say, what are the chances of this happening? And in reality, well, the, the chances are very low, right? Most populations will be evolving and will change their allele frequencies over time. But we can use this hardy one break equilibrium as a way, as a starting point. So we want to see is what are the pressures influencing this population? So if the alleles are not stable, which of these factors is the one that is acting on the population and is causing that population to evolve. So we can use hardy weinberg as a diagnostic tool to see whether the population is evolving or not, and then look into which of these factors is causing alleles to change in that population.